India has released its economic survey. It's a first under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's second term. According to the survey, the government expects growth to expand to 7% in 2019 and 2020. It attributes the boost to structural reforms that were initiated by Mr. Narendra Modi and a general uptick in macro conditions. And it says India will need to sustain a growth of 8% if it were to reach a $5 trillion economy. That's the magic economic number Mr. Modi is targeting by 2024. But India's economy is currently worth $2.7 trillion, and GDP presently hovers around 5.8%, its lowest level in five years. Some economists say Mr. Modi needs growth rates of over 10% to hit that target. India is also battling slowing consumption and a rural crisis. Today's survey is the blueprint towards India's economic future and comes just a day before Mr. Modi releases the full budget. Analysts say the budget to be presented by newly minted finance minister Nirmala Sitharaman will be the real test for the government. Niha Punya has all the details in this report. As India's first full-time woman finance minister, Nirmala Sitharaman will make history when she presents the budget in parliament. But the economist will be walking a tightrope. All eyes will be on whether or not she can give India's economy a much-needed boost. Unlike her predecessors, Ms. Sitharaman took to social media last month to crowdsource ideas for the budget. And while the demands from the public are many, experts say the most pressing challenge for the finance minister is to find ways to boost GDP growth, which has slumped to a five-year low of 6.8%. That, in turn, would drive domestic consumption. The, the uh, demand slowdown happened in the unorganized sector, and now it's affecting the organized sector also. So demand for automobiles, demand for FMCG, demand for a variety of other things, that has declined. At the lower level in the unorganized sector, you have to pump in purchasing power. So the support for the farmers that the government announced, that perhaps could be enhanced and could be made available even to the urban poor, you know, so that the demand for uh, these goods uh, rises. Economists say the consumption slowdown is directly linked to India's rising unemployment employment pegged at a nearly five decade high. The suggestion from experts is that instead of focusing only on the creation of physical infrastructure and welfare schemes, the government should spend more on public health and education. Economists say this increased expenditure will lead to more jobs and help fix India's unemployment problem while also boosting economic growth. Currently, government spending on health and education makes up less than 5% of India's trillion dollar GDP. However, the question is how will the government fund those schemes? The government faced a $23 billion shortfall in revenue collection last year and experts warn that maintaining a fiscal deficit target of 3.4% will be tough. Uh, the worry is uh, the sales have been slowing down of key uh, segments which our drivers are not just of revenue and excise taxes etc but on the other side they're also large employers of uh, contractual labor and so on and there are production cuts uh, in the auto segment and all so uh, the expectation would be to see how the government manages uh, these uh, tasks now let's look at the changes uh, you know fiscal policy is all about changes in revenue and uh, expenditures or taxation and spending so on the taxation side, uh, as far as the economic backdrop is concerned or conditions are concerned, this is not a good time for raising taxes. Um, you know, it would be counterproductive. While the government may not raise taxes for the middle class, the buzz is that it could levy a tax on high net worth individuals to shore up its revenue collections. With the election done and dusted, this budget will be about tough measures to fix Asia's third largest economy and the new finance minister has an uphill task on her hands. Neha Punya, CNA, New Delhi.